So I'm on a series. This is, this is part one, lesson two. So this is lesson two of part one of a series that we kicked off two weeks ago, and it's called The Healthy Church. Everybody say The Healthy Church. And you can put that screen up if you want. The Healthy Church, because there is only one church. There is only one body of Christ. The body of Christ is a healthy body, okay? So I'm not going to spend much time recapping. You can go to YouTube and pull up CCOET and look up the service that was dated uh, 11-15, I believe, and, and you can listen to that sermon. But I will just quickly, briefly tell you the foundation that I laid. Um, I compared the healthy church to a healthy physical body, and I showed how the Word of God talks or refers to the church as the body of Christ. I gave several scriptures for that. So since the Word of God refers to the church as the body of Christ, then we could compare the body of Christ to a healthy physical body. And we focused on two characteristics. Last lesson, I may say last week, but I'm, gonna, I'm not even going to worry about it. If I say last week, you know, the last, the last week that we were here. We focused on two characteristics of a healthy body. And the first characteristic is a healthy body takes in what is necessary for life and vitality. And I issued a challenge to everyone. If you were here and you remember what that challenge is, raise your hand. I issued a challenge that we all would establish our homes to be... Homes of springs of sweet water and not bitter. That our devices would flow only with springs of sweet water and not bitter because James says a fountain cannot have both sweet and bitter water flowing. And I asked that every one of us individually focus heavily on what is flowing into our lives. In other words, we need to be taking in what is necessary for life and vitality and not taking in a lot of junk. So I, I would like to carry that on again another week. Let's be careful what we're taking in and uh, let's not take in a lot of junk flowing into us through our own words or through technology or devices or TVs or environments that we place ourselves in. It's very important if we're going to be a healthy church, we've got to be made up of healthy people. And you, you need to be healthy by taking in what is spiritually necessary for you to have life and vitality. Amen? So I just want to briefly mention what my husband and I are doing. So we, uh, we have established recently that every Saturday is going to be our Sabbath day unto the Lord. It's, it's a day unto the Lord. So we're going to take it a step further, and we're going to unplug devices. We understand we're pastors. That's very hard to do. So if you text us and we don't reply, we're not ignoring you, but we're unplugging because this can be so toxic, and this can be so addictive, and this can be so controlling, and this can be so high maintenance, okay? So... Understand your pastors are not ignoring you on Saturdays if it's an emergency call and we will answer. We're not turning our phones off, but we are not checking text messages. So just understand, and we invite you to do that with us. We invite you on Saturdays or one day a week, unplug, give that day to the Lord, have fun with your family, rest and recreate, have recreational time, let the Lord fill you back up, okay? It's good. He created us one day a week for our bodies to rest from laboring and working. And we're not asking you to be legalistic with that. We're just asking you to let him fill you back up, okay? And you say, what about shift work? And I say, my husband has shift work, so we understand. Do it on Monday if you can. Do it on Tuesday. Just find a time once a week to try to get away from all the distractions of life. Take your family to the park. Do something. Enjoy the blessings of the Lord. And how about enjoy the Lord? 
enjoy the Lord, okay? So uh, I, I thought I would just mention that to you because um, you, if, if it's Saturday and you don't hear from us, don't worry. But if it is an emergency, go ahead and call us because um, we do understand that, that the ox can be in the ditch at times. Um, so that was characteristic number one, that a healthy body takes in what is necessary for life and vitality. And the second characteristic I touched on last week, I didn't finish. I'm going to pick back up with that today. The second characteristic of a healthy body is it discards what is unnecessary and what is harmful to life and vitality. And I talked about how our bodies discard carbon dioxide because carbon dioxide can kill us. And I related that to how we should not be retaining glory honor, worship, and praise, because if we do, that can be toxic to us, and it can turn into toxic pride. Those things belong to the only one that is worthy of them, and that is to God Almighty. So it's okay that we receive accolades. It's okay that we receive respect. It's okay that we receive compliments, but we take our crowns and we lay them at the feet of Jesus Christ, because he is the only one that can handle glory, honor, worship, and praise. Make sense? Okay, I'm gonna, I was gonna try not to do this, but it is too hot, so I'm gonna take this jacket off. I try, every week I try. In fact, Sunday morning, just to be a little transparent with you, Sunday morning, I wore a sweater and some corduroy pants, and by the end of choir practice, I was in jeans and a t-shirt. I couldn't handle it. Complete, complete change of clothes. So I'm trying. I'm trying to do more than jeans and a T-shirt, but it's just not working yet. So, okay, let's pick back up. Let me pray, and then I'm going to carry on with what the Lord has for us tonight. God, I thank you. I thank you for your rhema word. I thank you that your word is alive and you inspire us and you speak to us. And we are not just a museum of what used to be, but we are the church of the living God and you are still alive. You're not a statue. There's no replica of you. You are here in full form and fashion. And we thank you for that mighty God. I ask that you come into this place and you manifest yourself however you choose. Lord, I bind my mind to the mind of Christ. I bind my words to your words, and I ask that you speak through me. In Jesus' name, it's all for your glory. Amen. All right, so we're going to continue with a healthy body discards what is unnecessary and harmful to life and vitality. So another form of discarding performed by a healthy body is in the form of burning calories. Um, whoever is running the projector, I believe that's Mr. Benjamin. Ben, can you put that slide up that talks? Yeah. So what happens to calories that aren't used as energy? Energy-rich nutrients. This is for a healthy human body. Energy-rich nutrients that aren't used right away will get stored. First in the liver and then later as body fat. In general, someone should eat the same amount of energy each day as his or her body will use. If the balance is off, they will lose or gain weight. Now, how many of you have found that the balance usually is not in the form of losing weight? The balance being off is usually in the form of, of gaining weight. So a healthy body... Um, discards nutrients in the form of burning calories, okay? Let me get to my place right here. So that means that the healthy church has plenty of laborers because the people that make up the healthy church are aware that not only is taking in nutrients vital, but so is burning them, okay? We are designed to discard our gifts, our talents, and our abilities. We are not designed to store them. 
We are not supposed to carry our gifts, our talents, our abilities to the grave with us. Now, Miles Monroe says that the grave is the, the richest place on earth because it is full of unwritten songs. It is full of unproduced and unfinished uh, patents. It is full of great ideas that stayed ideas and were stored as ideas and were carried to the grave without ever being fulfilled. You're not designed to hang on to your gifts, your talents, and your abilities. Matthew 25, verse 14 through 30 says, For like a man traveling to a far country, called his own servants and delivered his goods to them, and to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability, and immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents, he received, he went and traded them. He discarded them so that they could produce, and he made another five talents. And likewise, he who gained two, gained two more also, because he took what was given and he burned it wisely and it reproduced. Look here. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. And I like to say it this way. He was going to carry it to the grave with him. He stored it. Now, I'm not going to read that whole parable because it's pretty long. But let me go down and you will see that the one, Ben can just kind of go through them. The one to whom had received five talents and he discarded those talents, put them to good use, and they multiplied. And then the one that had two and did the same thing, the master said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. But there's a, there's a big but there. He looks at the man with one and he says, where's the one? And Here's what I find. People that store nutrients, they have an overabundance of something called excuses. Excuses just flow, and immediately it just flowed out of the man's mouth. But, Lord, I know that you're a harsh man, and you like to receive what's not yours. And so I went out of fear, and I hid it. And the Lord said, you wicked fool." You should have at least burned what I gave you. You should have at least done something, taken what I gave you, and used it to at least gain some interest. So the Bible says that this is Jesus. Jesus says that he took from the man who was going to store, and he gave it to the man that had five. Because when God gives you something, he never intends on you to store it or hoard it or bury it or take it to the grave with you. If you've got a voice, you need to be using it. If you're good with kids, you need to be burning calories. If you can make food, you need to burn those calories and join helping hands. If you're a smart, strong man, you need to be burning those calories. Be an usher. Be a security team uh, member. If you are good with the word of God and you know how to love, go out into the world and just burn those calories, loving people everywhere you go. Matthew 25, 31 through 46, Jesus gives this parable, and he says, When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, he will sit on the throne of his glory, and all the nations will be gathered to him. And you can go home and study that. And he says, I'm going to separate the, the sheep from the goats. And they said, How do you know who's a sheep and who's a goat? And he said, Well, to the goats, I'll know they're a goat because they don't give to the hungry. They don't give to the poor. They don't give anything. But the sheep 
give to the hungry, give to the poor. The sheep receive and give, but the goats receive and keep. And they said, but God, when, when did we see the hungry? When did we see you hungry? When did we see you um, needing clothing? When did we see you in need? And he said, whenever you didn't do it to the least of these, you didn't do it unto me. And so what he's saying is, I have given you so much, and you sat on it. And if you sit on it, I'm going to call you a goat. And you may think you're the greatest of all time, but all goats shall find themselves in the lake of fire. Jesus said, where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth, but to the sheep, I'm going to say, enter into the everlasting joy of the Lord. Who's a sheep? Those who took in nutrients and burned those nutrients. Sheep are not fat. Sheep are not fat. I'm not talking about people. Sheep are not fat. In another parable, Luke quotes Jesus saying this, For everyone to whom much is given, from him much will be required. If we are going to be part of the church, the very healthy, the healthy church, if we are going to be a part of the very healthy body of Christ, we must as individuals take in good nutrients and calories like I talked about last week, but we also must burn those calories. So as your pastors, Jeremy and I are not satisfied raising up believers who take in the word of God and soak in the worship service after service and enjoy the fellowship and love the sermons and bask in the spirit of God, taking in much and burning nothing. Just storing it all. Lethargic. Thoroughly enjoying all the receiving. Thoroughly enjoying all of the goodness that the healthy church is producing, but just hoarding it up and storing it all. Taking in the rich blessings of the Lord, but unwilling to put forth the energy to discard. Unwilling to put forth any energy burning spiritual calories. And I know, I know. I know there are plenty of excuses. Well, I just don't feel like it. I try, but my body won't allow me to work for the Lord. I just don't have the time. I just don't have the energy. I'm just too tired. I'm too overwhelmed with my own life. I'm not qualified. I'm not desirable. I'm tired. There's a quote that I quoted from... Uh, the Academy of Nutrition and that says, according to the American Academy of Nutrition, morbidly obese individuals should consume, follow me here, 22 calories for every kilogram they weigh. It's very important that we're talking about a body but we get to compare it to the body of Christ. So just like a physical body, those who refuse to burn calories end up storing nutrients that turn to spiritual fatness. And ultimately, they require more nutrients and more calories than the healthy body that burns what they take in. My husband has ran a couple of medical calls on people that weigh over a thousand pounds. And they have to, somebody that weighs that much has to actually take in a certain number of calories just to survive. And this is what I felt like the Lord was showing me. People that want to come in and just soak in all the goodness of God and just get fat on it. They start requiring more out of everybody else than those who are burning. 
I can promise you the person that sits on a pew and comes in Sunday and Sunday and Wednesday and Wednesday and they just receive, 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 they are a lot higher maintenance than somebody that comes in, receives, and gives it back out. And it makes no sense. I'm going to put it in Julio's words. The people that require the most give the least. The people that give out the least require the most. So if we're going to be a part, can I have that, can I have that one picture, Ben? I mean, he's even just worshiping. I mean, this is a spiritual Christian just coming in and just loving the choir singing and loving the Cuff Cafe and lo- keep it up there, loving Jeremy's preaching and loving the celebration they receive when they walk through the doors and they're just soaking it in and they're just hoarding it all and they're just, just blowing up and then they decide they want to not be active and then fuss at you because you don't reach out to them. And they never say, wait a minute, while I was off, I didn't reach out to anybody. So those that get spiritually fat on the goodness of God then find themselves not only spiritually lethargic, but they find themselves needing to take in more and more and more and they'll wear a church out. And when there's no solution, listen to me, when there's no solution, it's a spiritual problem. Okay. If they'd start burning some of those calories and if they'd find themselves here and giving back, receiving the goodness of God and giving back to the world, receiving the goodness of God and giving back, then they'll find themselves healthy and lower maintenance and they'll live longer spiritually. Morbidly obese people My husband ran a call on, like I said, a gentleman that weighed over 1,000 pounds, and he was only about 35 years old, nearly dead. You need to live longer than that. Spiritually, if you just take in and you find yourself every time we ask for a volunteer, you get aggravated about it, I hope we make you so uncomfortable that you go get fat somewhere else. You need to go to work for God. You need to burn some calories in the kingdom of God because he's going to say at the end, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Faithful doing what? Oh, well, just faithfully receiving, just faithfully receiving. He didn't design your body to just receive. And he didn't design his body to just receive. I know it's tough. Let me hide. <laughs> I don't mean to be so tough. I catch myself with an ugly face. I just need, I should have made my lips stick, stick like a permanent smile tonight. I'm really happy. I'm really loving this series. <laughs> huh? <coughs> I'm blaming it on Julio. Why did Jesus, well, let me just say this. If if we're going to be part of the healthy church as pastors, you're going to have to let us challenge you to get active. You're going to have to let us challenge you to engage. You're going to have to let us challenge you to sacrifice. You're going to have to let us challenge you to give. You're going to have to let us challenge you to discard your talents and discard your gifts. Yes, take in the rich blessings of the Lord, but let those rich blessings fuel you for bearing fruit. Go back and look and see why Jesus cursed the fig tree in Mark 11, 12 through 14. That's not a parable. That really happened. Why did Jesus curse the fig tree? I know what you're doing, Brandy. Thank you. So sweet. You're so precious. Thank you so much. (laughs) Thank you, Angela. (laughs) Yes, I need it. Thank you, all precious. Okay, 2 Corinthians 5, 18 through 20. We enjoy the blessings of the Lord, but it's important that we realize 
that we're not designed to just soak in those blessings only. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 18 says, Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. There we took in some rich blessings, but right off the bat, and then he gave us the ministry of reconciliation. What is that? That's called burning cal calories. That right there is like he, he gave us the ministry of reconciliation and then he put us on a treadmill. I mean, he gave us the, the blessing of reconciliation and then he put us on the treadmill and said, now I'm giving you a ministry. What I just gave you, go put it to good use. Keep going, verse 19. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself and has committed to us the word of reconciliation, and this is what we're supposed to do. Verse 20. We are ambassadors for Christ, as though God were pleading how? Through us. There's calories being burned right there. Pleading through us. We're supposed to tell people, be reconciled to Christ. Be reconciled to Christ. Your life looks like it looks because you're missing a major ingredient called Jesus Christ. You're missing a major ingredient called the blessings of the Lord. Look over to your friend and say, burn those calories. Okay. That was 20 minutes. Now I got 20 minutes. Let's go to the third characteristic of a healthy body the third characteristic of a healthy physical body that we are going to compare to the healthy church and to all my people in the medical field understand most of us are on like a pre-k medical level okay so please indulge me and let this lesson stay on a pre-k medical level okay because this is a little bit of medical stuff. The third characteristic of a healthy body is it grows by the multiplication of healthy cells. It grows by the multiplication of healthy cells. So number one, a healthy body takes in what is necessary for life and vitality. Number two, it discards what is unnecessary and harmful to life and vitality. And number three, it grows by the multiplication of healthy cells. A healthy body, when a child is growing, their arm grows by the multiplication and reproduction of those cells. Okay? I better stick to my notes because Google helped me on this. In a healthy body, tune in. This is good. In a healthy body, unhealthy cells die and are replaced by healthy cells. Just as a healthy body grows until maturity, so should the body of Christ grow until our day of maturity when Jesus Christ calls us home. And just as in the healthy human body, healthy cells replace old and damaged cells. Tune in. The healthy church is so healthy that damaged cells are replaced with healthy cells. Listen to me, Jonathan. Damaged hearts are replaced with healthy hearts. Damaged emotions are replaced with healthy emotions. Insecurities are replaced with wholeness. Anxieties are replaced with peace. Orphan spirits are replaced with a spirit of adoption. Do you understand what I'm saying? When we grow, the way we're going to grow is the unhealthy, damaged are going to come in like damaged cells, but they don't stay damaged and multiply as damaged. They come in and they get heart transformation. They get vision transformation. They get marriage transformation. They get family restoration. Is that right, Jonathan? Is that how it happens? 
That's how it's supposed to happen. If your heart hurts, you shouldn't have to visit a church 500 times to find out if you're loved. You should be able to visit one time and the spirit of the living God take a hurting heart and immediately start the, you've had a, you've had a heart transplant and you didn't have to wait on a list. And God's not finished with any man in the prodigal home. God's not finished with you. Great things are coming. Romans 8 and 15 says, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption. So people come in feeling like they're an orphan and they're replaced with a spirit of adoption inside of them because the body of Christ is just that healthy. Isaiah 61, 1 and 3 says, The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. And that same spirit is up on his church because the Lord has anointed us to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent us to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison to those who are bound, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes. People walk in with damaged cells and they say, I have nothing but ashes to offer and they get to go home with beauty. <laughs> that's what happens in a healthy body. Healthy cells replace the damaged cells. That is why we die at an altar. I bring all of my damaged fleshly self and I crucify it at the altar and then I get to rise in newness of life and we get to bury all of that damage. There's an exchange, the word of God says in Isaiah 61 and 3. They come in with mourning and they take home the oil of joy. They come in with heaviness in their hearts and they take home the garment of praise. Damaged cells in a healthy body are replaced by healthy cells. Damaged hearts in a healthy body church are replaced by healed hearts but let's look at this cancer what is cancer cancer is the rapid multiplication of unhealthy cells cancer is the rapid multiplication of abnormal cells cancer is the rapid multiplication of damaged unhealthy cells so if the church isn't healthy we pull in the lost we pull in the addicted we pull in the ones searching for love in all the wrong places and instead of them being changed the church becomes a place that cultivates adultery the church becomes a place if it's not healthy where drug deals take place in the sanctuary. If we're not healthy and we pull in the damaged, then the church becomes a place that cultivates gossip groups and a husband bashing and children bashing and stepchildren bashing. The church then becomes a place where attention seekers are cultivated. When the church isn't healthy, the lost change the church instead of the church changing the lost. So I, if I'm speaking to you, you know that the Spirit of God is on your case and you're going to be found out soon. This house is not a place for drugs to be passed. Don't you call each other and ask for narcotics. And don't you give narcotics. Don't you pass weed in this house. Don't you make drug deals in this house. This house is not a place for secret hookups. Don't you flirt in this house.
This church is not a place for gossip sessions. You better love your husband. Don't you bash him. This place is not a place for religious quarrels and divisive debates. You get on your knees and you ask God for a revelation that you don't have to try to debate with everybody around to prove a point. You don't have to have the last word. You get on your knees and you ask the spirit of the living God to come into this place. And this is what I say, Father, give everybody a revelation like Peter received when Jesus said, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. But my Father in heaven was so close to you that he showed you. This isn't a place for teenagers to come and be introduced to the confusion of Satan's lies. This is not a house for children to be victims. This is not a place for rebellion to multiply and take over. This is not a place for bitterness and unforgiveness to incubate and drama to be on display. This is a healthy church. I think everybody should stand to their feet right now. And you should lift your hands and you say, Father, everything that is happening in this church that is unhealthy, evict it now in the name of Jesus. Listen, if you leave because you're offended, I won't call you and I won't ask why you're offended. You can discreetly leave, but you're not going to continue to do what you've been doing and sit in this house unmoved. Father, shine your light on everything that displeases you in this house. You can be seated. I'm going to tell you how Paul handled it. This is what this church is. This church is a healthy church. And this church is made up of this kind of people. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 6. Verse 12, I think, or 13. He says, and such were some of you. He's talking about terrible things. And such were were some of you but you were washed but you were sanctified but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus we're not afraid of your past we're not afraid of your damage come on in you're going to be washed you're going to be transformed you're going to be sanctified by the blood of Jesus and those damaged cells have no room to reproduce and be a cancer in the church we don't have money problems in this church. We're not going to have sex problems in this church. We're not going to have drama problems in this church. And we're not going to have homosexual problems in this church. And we're not going to have pedophilia problems in this church. And we're not going to have ugliness and witchcraft and darkness in this church. Let me tell you what else we're not going to have. We're not going to have debilitating depression that kills you, Diana. You're going to get to come out of that in Jesus' name. Bipolar disorder is not going to control your life. You're going to get to come out of that in Jesus' name. Infection inside of your body, Angela, can't live. It's got to come out in Jesus' name. We're not going to have a church full of the infirm. We're going to have a church that's been radically healed by the blood of Jesus Christ. I want you to go study how Paul addressed a very unhealthy church in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. They were very unhealthy. And he told them, he said, the unrighteous is not going to inherit the kingdom of God. And he said, don't be deceived. Fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. And then he says, and such were some of you, but you've been changed. We're not worried about your yesterday. We're not worried about your yesterday. But today it's time to be transformed by the blood of Jesus. Now, that's how Paul dealt with an unhealthy church. But let's look how, if you think I, like if you don't like my actions tonight, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't even like my actions, okay? 
Listen, I know it's the foolishness of preaching that change, changes men's souls and saves men's souls. And, and I know it's extremely foolish. And I don't do this to be popular because nothing, this doesn't even look good. Okay? But let me tell you, this is nothing compared to what Jesus did. I want us to look at how Jesus responded when the temple was beginning to multiply with cancerous cells. Matthew 21, verse 12 through 13, Jesus went into the temple of God and he drove out all those who bought and sold in the temple. They took in the blessings of the Lord and they used them for their own gain. And he overturned the tables of the money changers. All of those of you that say God is only just loving, look at how he handled the money changers. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he said to them, it is written, my house shall be called a house of prayer. And he reestablished what that house was to look like. Now I want to tell you the very next thing that happened. He made it healthy. And then look what happened. Verse 14. Once he set it straight, then the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. He got rid of the cancer cells and then damaged cells came in and left completely healed. That's the kind of church we've got to be. That's the only church that we can afford to be. Immediately, it began replacing unhealthy cells with healthy ones. So bow your heads if you will. Tonight, before you leave this place, let the spirit of the living God come inside of your hearts and let him replace all the damaged cells with his supernatural healing, his supernatural ability to deliver, his supernatural salvation. Let the spirit of the Lord God be upon his church to take the damaged and turn them into the healed. Take the damaged and turn them into the whole. Take the damaged and turn them into the delivered. Take the damaged and turn them into the free. Take the damaged and turn them into the loved. And then those of us with comeback stories who have received much, let's get up and let's go to work burning spiritual calories so more healthy growth can continue in the house of God. We've got four minutes and I'm going to ask the house lights to go down if it will. And I'm, I'm going to ask Bryce to play Lex, do you have a song? I want us instead of giving an altar call right now I would just like everybody where you're sitting to let the word of God meet you where you're at right now. Wherever this spoke to you, let it meet you where you're at and let it do a work. If you need to go to work, see Jeremy Dan at the end of this service and go to work. If you need damaged cells repaired, then the presence of God is here to replace damaged cells. If your past is causing you to bury your talents that God has given you out of fear and out of feeling unworthy, then let the Spirit of God give you a transformation and a healing that keeps you from hoarding what He's given you out of fear. Father, I thank you that you have allowed me to release your word. And I ask in Jesus' name that whatever you wanted to accomplish, that you accomplish it by your supernatural power. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's just sit where we are. Of course, the altars are always open. If you want to come to the altar, if you're drawn to the altar, you can come. But let's take two solid minutes before 8 o'clock to let him work in us. Feel your embrace Come fill the empty place Inside my heart And under your wing Is where I long to be Just you
Yeah. 